Okay, so let's talk about general purpose I.O. and we're talking about digital I.O. Um, in the textbook, uh, there's a one section in chapter 10, 10.1.2, uh, 10 uh, talks about general purpose I.O. Uh, I want to just move that content to here today, um, help you understand some of the concepts that you use in the first lab. Um, general purpose I.O. Uh, or GPIO that you often heard enables the software to either read or write digital voltages representing a logic one or zero. Uh, we often use VDD or VSS to say that's a supply voltage. Um, they depends on the microcontroller you use. Uh, it could be um, oftentimes five volts or 3.3 volts. Um, either way, uh, you will need to uh, understand what we mean by active high or active low. Uh, in active high, uh, when the logic one is um, referred, the corresponding voltage is close to VDD, the supply voltage. And logic zero is close to zero volt. Um, when we say Active low, and it's the opposite. Uh, in the case of active low, uh, we're saying the logic one corresponds to uh, active uh, to voltage close to zero, and logic zero, uh, the corresponding voltage is close to VDD. Now, just to keep that in mind, uh, if you um, are confused, uh, you need to check the data sheet. Uh, to read the, um, the symbols to understand if it's active high or active low. Um, oftentimes in the timing diagram, if the signal is active low, it typically has a, a little bar on top of that uh, name of the signal. And that's an indication that it's active low. Uh, otherwise, by default, the signals are active high. Um, when you uh, send uh, signals uh, out and if you want to control um, LEDs, those red, uh, green, yellow lights, you are talking about outputting and the software can write zero or one to memory mapped registers. Depends on the microcontroller you use, uh, you may have um, these registers with specific names uh, or in some cases those are addresses uh, mapped to certain uh, memory address range. Um, so you need to be conscious about how uh, these registers are named or referred uh, and then your software, you need to do that properly. I will talk a little bit more uh, in our, um, uh, for our um, Arduino board, uh, especially Arduino IDE, uh, how we should you know, do that. Um, we need to be cautious about the current limit uh, for these uh, low power uh, embedded microcontrollers. Uh, typically, they uh, cannot sustain a very high current. Uh, so there's a current limit. If the current is over the limit, uh, chances are you will damage the, the chip, so you will stop functioning. Uh, the limit, uh, you know, uh, the current is calculated as the voltage divided by resistance. Uh, if you exceed that limit, uh, your device may be damaged or overheated. The benefits of using GPIO is to maintain electrical isolation between the microcontroller and external devices. You may have uh, the microcontroller connected to different uh, external devices. Uh, which you know, could well be from a different vendor uh, from the microcontroller. And these devices, they have different operation uh, capabilities, electronic, uh, electrical characteristics. Uh, they may themselves generate uh, noisy uh, electrical signals. And if such noise signals spills into the microcontroller, uh, the microcontroller will become unreliable. And uh, in that case, your computation will produce uh, incorrect or unreliable result. So there's no way you can uh, control your system to 
uh, implement those state machines properly. So that's why uh, GPIOs are important to isolate between the microcontroller internal and external environment. For um, uh, you know, more general uh, electrical designs, uh, we're talking about electrical domains uh, in a system, we may use separate power supplies. Uh, in our, um, I believe is the uh, third lab, uh, we'll be using separate power supplies because we'll uh, need to power a um, motor that's a high power device. And whereas the microcontroller, the Atmel 2560 is a low power microcontroller. Uh, it's uh, safer to operate them on separate power supplies. Uh, that will um, you know, yield little inference uh, on one another. To isolate uh, separate uh, electrical domains, you can use uh, optical uh, isolators. Uh, that means you can convert the uh, electrical signal to optical and then back to the other um, optical signal, but in a different electrical domain. So you can um, generate a control signal from the microcontroller using the optical isolator to uh, transform that into an uh, optical signal uh, spectrum. And then on the other hand, on the other end, to convert that back to electrical signal to control a high power device. Uh, those are typically seen in high power control systems. Or you, know, you use uh, transformers, uh, you can use inductive coupling to do that kind of uh, isolation and uh, signal um, transfer. The internal design of GPIOs may uh, well be different, but they follow these uh, kinds of uh, design principles. For the input, uh, it, they use a Schmidt trigger uh, with uh, uh, hysteresis. Um, it's essentially an um, amplifier plus some sort of feedback function, uh, as we show in the top left. Uh, this is uh, useful uh, to uh, remove the, the jittering in the um, noisy signals, um, you know, which typically is vulnerable to noises. And then uh, with this uh, signal, the software will react to uh, externally provided voltage. Uh, again, active high, that means, uh, you know, if voltage close to VDD, and uh, that's a logic one. For the output direction, uh, typically uh, the open collector circuit is used. Uh, it's a transistor connected to a, a bit in the register. And one, uh, the, the bit will control the on and off, switched on and off the transistor. So you may end up having the, um, you know, the transistor will be uh, um, you know, connecting the GPIO pin to ground or isolated from the ground. If you write a logic one to the memory map the register, uh, in this case, it will turn on the transistor. So uh, you have the voltage uh, of that GPL pin put down to zero. Um, you know, this might be counterintuitive, but think about this is, could be an active low uh, device. Um, that's why you have a logic one, then you have output to be a zero. Um, when you have open collector type of circuit, uh, you can use it um, to connect uh, multiple GPIO pins from multiple controllers. And the benefit of doing that is uh, any one controller can pull the bus voltage down uh, if needed. Um, the same pin can be used for input and output. And in this diagram, as you can see, we have multiple um, users or microcontrollers connected to the same bus. Um, this is particularly useful for protocols like I square C, uh, which we'll talk about uh, in later classes. Uh, on this kind of buses, multiple uh, devices or microcontrollers are connected. Um, the GPIO, uh, the open collector uh, GPIOs will be able to, um, you know, uh, make sure the um, bus protocol is followed and all the voltage that pulled down can be seen by all the other controllers. And also for uh, isolation purpose, uh, it's possible to isolate 
uh, these controllers or devices from the bus if necessary. Uh, why is the current limited? Uh, because here uh, you see we have an external pull-up resistor uh, so that when you uh, have one of the uh, registers written bit one and that um, GPIO uh, pin will be pulled down to zero and because of the pull-up resistor, it will prevent short, uh, short circuit um, um, when you have this being grounded to zero. Um, let's look at this example. Uh, if we want to use the GPL pin to turn on the LED, uh, assume that the microcontroller by design can sync up to 18 milliamps. Um, so the maximum current that going into the, um, the microcontroller through this GPL pin will be 18 milliamps. And assume the LED uh, when forward biased and it's turned on, uh, the voltage has drop of two volts. And so that's here, that's two volt uh, voltage drop if uh, it's forward biased. Um, then the question here is, what resistors should you use? You don't have to tell me the exact number, um, but can anyone tell me uh, the, the way or the steps you want to do to calculate that? Uh, is it like uh, yes, yes. two divided by, I mean, two volts divided by 18 milliamps? Okay, any other uh, opinions? Okay, so you're getting close. Uh, so the- Is it one volt by 18 milliamp? That's right. So well, we saying here the voltage drop on the LED. So this is two volt dro voltage drop here. So that means uh, on this resistor, the voltage drop is one volt. Three minus two is one volt. And the current going through the resistor uh, should not exceed 18 milliamps. Uh, that's why uh, when you calculate uh, it's essentially uh, one over this 18 milliamps. Uh, that's the um, value of the transistor uh, resistor you should use. Okay, so that was a very quick um, description about uh, GPIO. Um, so in the next 20 minutes, I will talk about the, our lab one. So lab one, as I mentioned many times, it's gonna be a traffic controller, traffic light controller. Um, just to recap what we want this traffic light controller to do. And of course, we wanna have the, uh, the basic rotating pattern, green, red, yellow, um, sorry, uh, green, yellow, red, green, yellow, red. And we would like to have 15 second countdown on green and red. So green stays on for 15 seconds, followed by yellow, uh, which stays on for five seconds, uh, used for warning, and then switch to uh, red, which is you know, on for another 15 seconds. Um, wait, I thought I... Excuse me, Professor? Yeah. I think I remember in another PowerPoint, there were different instructions. Like I think yellow was three seconds and some of these weren't in there. Okay. Is this what we should follow for the lab and not the other one? Okay, very good question. Um, so these numbers, um, I think I updated them, but you should read the post the PDF file, lab one, um, Blackboard. So that's the um, document you should follow. Um, oh, okay. Then, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. So also, I think I, you know, I thought I, this. So I, I crossed out this line uh, for the uh, stop rotation after 10 minutes. Um, this is a feature I thought of asking you to implement, uh, but to make this lab, um, because this is the first lab, 
and many of you are not very familiar with Arduino uh, development, although it's um, easy to pick up, but I want to keep this first lab um, on the simpler side. So I removed this requirement. Um, so in fact, let me, so this is the one I want to show you. So this is the PDF I was talking about. Uh, this has been posted on Blackboard. If you will click the labs section, you will see this is the first lab posted there. Also, you need to click the link to submit uh, your lab report when you finish. Uh, so this is a remote lab, as we all know. And the due date, I believe is, um, well, um, I might say it wrong, but you, know, you can see the due date as I posted on Blackboard already. Um, you need to submit the lab report through Blackboard. Please do not email me the submissions. Um, let's see. All right. Um, uh, please note that uh, there are additional comp, uh, requirements for the graduate student uh, graduate course section. Uh, you need to uh, look for carefully in these uh, requirements. We would like to have these uh, things implemented at start of the system. Um, the red light should flash until a button is pressed. Um, so obviously you need a button uh, in this design. The second requirement is the red light stays for 15 seconds before the green light is turned on. Um, green light, 15 seconds. Um, yellow light for three seconds. And you repeat the um, red, green, yellow pattern. And the other requirement is the active buzzer beeps for three seconds before a light is changed. So obviously you need a uh, active buzzer, which is included in the uh, lab kit. For the, um, for the lights, you can just use the LEDs um, to represent. Uh, you need some um, resistors to do the current limiting. Um, the additional requirement for um, graduate students uh, is this number seven. You need to have a four digit seven segment display that shows the time in seconds remaining for each light. So um, let's say you, when you start the red light flashes and you press the button. So the next thing the system should do is the red light will stay on for 15 seconds. So you are um, seven segment display, although we are only seeing two digit, only need two digit, but you have a four digit seven segment. So you can use that to count the seconds down uh, from uh, 15, 14, and 13, and so on back to zero, down to zero. Um, let me see if someone is sending a message here. Um, oh, thank you. So. The due date of the lab is October 11th. Um, for number six, uh, does that mean the buzzer beeps during the yellow light? Good question. Uh, the answer is yes. So the, the beeping should be uh, applied to all these three lights. Okay. Um, Okay, so um, the required software uh, is of course the Arduino IDE. You should download that from here, install that on your uh, machine or laptop. There are um, a lot of resource files, sample code and tutorials that you can download from the vendor of the kit. I included this link here. You can cl uh, click that and download. Uh, just, you know, download the ones that apply to our, uh, it's called a, you know, complete kit, um, you know, Mega 2560. So you, you will find it. So there are a bunch of files uh, 
included in the zip file. After you download and unzip, you will see a lot of folders uh, I will show you. Um, the, so I list a few steps here. These steps are recommended. You don't have to follow exactly uh, from step one, you know, all the way down. Um, first, you want to check these resource files under these different folders. So in the, uh, let me show you. Okay, so um, this one, this is the folder that you will um, see after you download and unzip the file. You'll see on the top level, copy me first. Uh, these are the um, lab library code that you can try out and use uh, and include in part, as a part of this resource um, folder. And data sheets are the data sheets for all the components included in, um, can you see my screen? I guess so. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, it, is it too small to see? Uh, the font? It's a little small. Okay. Uh, try, oh, it's a little bit too too big. Okay. Anyway, so you, you, you can get the idea that what uh, you're going to be having in this uh, resource uh, folder, um, data sheet, and the lessons I was referring in the um, you know, step one, this 2.1, 2.3, 2.5, 3.5. Um, actually here in this folder, so English, that's uh, part one. Uh, just, um, well, if you're not familiar with the Arduino at all, you, you should go start with part one. But after you do that, you will go into this part two. There are different folders with different lessons. Uh, for example, 2.5. Uh, let me start with this uh, 2.1. That's the LED. Uh, so this is a, a very short lesson, tutorial lesson to show you how to uh, wire up your circuit to uh, turn on the LED. Uh, I would expect most of you can do that without looking over this um, document. But if you're interested, you can still uh, read it to see you know, how uh, the wiring should be done or recommended way to wire uh, LEDs into the uh, Arduino. Um, so that's one lesson. The other one is the digital inputs. Digital inputs is essentially the button I was referring to. Uh, you should you know, take a look at it. The good thing about this uh, lesson document, this PDF files, PDF files, they are pretty short, three to five pages. Uh, they list the main components you will need to have, uh, which are in included in this kit, the uh, Arduino board, uh, the LED resistor, switches, and wires. Uh, it starts with some component introduction. For example, this is the push switch that we'll use uh, in this lab. Um, they are very simple, uh, but this one has uh, ABCD four um, legs or four uh, connectors. And it's a momentarily on switch, which means that all the time they are off. Uh, so that this is disconnected. Uh, you should be aware uh, which pair are disconnected. A and B are connected all the time. A and B are disconnected. So when you wire this up, uh, you need to be careful with the orientation uh, to see which, which side is which side. Uh, in this lesson, it uh, introduces the uh, very simple um, experiment where you have two switches uh, with one LED and uh, you can turn this LED on with any one of the switches. So this is the um, skip, um, not the schematic. Uh, well, this is the schematic, and then the wiring uh, guidelines, and it refers some code. 
and this is the source code included as a part of the um, PDF, uh, as part of the resource um, folder. So if you click this digital uh, inputs folder, and this is the uh, source code, uh, digital input dot INNO. So you should read this uh, if you are not familiar uh, with the Arduino and the some of the components, and you can use these um, included source code as a part of your design if you need it. Refer to the how they um, connect the pins, etc. How they uh, uh, set up the um, um, control registers. Um, so active buzzer is also here. You should read that. And for um, the graduate students, you need to also look at part three, uh, specifically part 3.5. That's the four digital, sorry, four digit seven segment display. Um, I think I might, you know, spend a little bit of time, maybe 10 minutes talk about the seven segment and the uh, shift registers next week. Uh, but before that, I recommend you to look over these folders uh, to get you yourself familiar with the components and uh, maybe try out some of the wiring uh, to implement these individual um, functions. As you can see that this resource folder has a lot of the uh, pieces that you need for doing the first lab. Uh, I'm fine with you use the part of the source code. And, but I think in the first lab and also true for the other labs, it's very important that you uh, use the concept we learned from this class. In this particular case, the state machines, you need to think uh, as a group how you should design a state machine. Um, then uh, use the um, examples provided in this resource folder to see how you implement your internet state machine. Um, I had questions uh, from some of you that um, whether you know, it's okay to use Arduino libraries, for example, the pin mode uh, or even the sleep, sleep function or um, you know, uh, seven segment library. Uh, the answer is yes, you can use those uh, but definitely you will need to go beyond those because you are building a um, complete system that will have uh, your initial models and you want to um, think and also describe in your lab report how you map your uh, state machine into this final design. Uh, also, I'm considering um, to give uh, extra points for students who uh, do not use uh, the Arduino libraries. Instead, use um, uh, direct access, read and write those Arduino at ML registers. Um, I will you know, provide a more clear um, guideline for the next, maybe if the second or the third lab. For the first lab, um, there will be no extra points, although you are encouraged to use um, the registers directly, uh, reading or writing. Um, because, you know, my rationale is that I haven't, I have not talked about the ML registers uh, in detail yet. Uh, so it's uh, not fair to, you know, give extra points at this point, uh, you know, if I haven't even talked about those. Uh, but I may consider giving uh, maybe extra one or two points for the lab. Um, if students use uh, primarily the, um, their own implementation by reading and writing the, to the registers directly, as opposed to using the Arduino library. Uh, I hope this makes sense. Um, it's 9.10 now. Uh, I will, um, I think I can wrap up here because the uh, next few slides are, um, you know, essentially I already talked about this hardware uh, button switch LED. So these are the things you need to go into the resource CD to uh, read a bit more. I will talk um, in more detail about the uh, seven segment and the shift registers um, next week. 
Um, uh, so with that, I will just end the lecture today. Um, do you have any questions before you go? Uh, 